Greetings, salutations, it's me, James, your BA Sensei. Welcome back to another Tower Query tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing some excellent things in mQuery where we are going to transform nested tables. And the context of what we're going to do, we are going to take a folder with some portfolios in it. We're going to draw data from this folder. And inside, we got various portfolios. You can see the sheet uh, is the portfolio name, and there's the stock portfolio at that period. There's the other one, uh, portfolio name, portfolio name, and you can see they all have different spacing. And the last one you can see, okay, a lot of stocks in there and also same thing. Um, it's not all standard. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use nested let functions and transform these nested tables. Enough talking, let me show you how to do it. Okay, so let's start with the fresh Excel workbook over here. So in your conventional UI way, what you'll be doing is you'll go to data, get data from file, from folder, you select the folder location, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to try and show you how to use mQuery a little bit better and understand nested tables and transforming nested tables and a little bit more advanced than normal. So what we're going to do is we're going to say other sources, blank query, opens Power Query over here and we just go to advanced editor. I'm just going to take my folder locations, copy it out there, go into my advanced editor and just paste it in over there, my query name there and say folder source. Cool. We're going to use this in our actual query. So let's start a new query over there. Other source, blank query. Let's call this solution. Okay. So in the source, we're just going to say folder files and we want to pull it from our folder source that we just created now and that should give you something like this pretty cool so this kind of gives you a peek inside of the folder and all the files within that folder let's add a step here and we say start like square brackets two of them you say bring me the content and bring me the name you can see now it's selected those two i'm just going to rename this to press f2 Select columns, yes. Now what I want to do next is I want to transform this binary into a, a nested table. I'm now going to show you how to use table transform columns to achieve this. So we're going to say, add a new step, table transform columns, yes, and give it that previous table name, select columns, yes. The syntax for transform columns, I love transform columns. It's a very powerful function. I use it everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to show you. So now you need to declare a list, yes, the transformation operation as a list. And we want to transform the content column. And I want to push it through the function Excel workbook. Excel workbook and just put that little underscore there that refers to the binary in that file and you say okay and you can see this transformed into a table you can see there's a table giving us a peek what's going on inside of each of those spreadsheets okay just one thing i want to do here i want to you can see we are some cases here where there's tables i want to filter out the tables i only want the sheets all right so i kind of want to do that now so i'm going to expand on this a little bit i'm going to take this existing one over here and just say after this e just press uh, shift and enter. I'm going to say table select rows. Yes. And I want to look specifically in the Excel workbook, obviously. And in there, I'm going to say for each item in there, I'm going to say each column. And I'm looking at the kind column. I want that to be sheet and sheet only. I don't want to have anything else. And here you can see we basically filtered out only the sheets. I'm going to call this content that's the content there we go now simply i can use a function but i'm just going to press expand and all i really want is i want the name and i want the actual data and now we have your portfolio name and you got your file name and this is our nested table we're going to transform we're going to use nested lets and trans transform columns to do some magic in here let's rename this to expanded i'm just going to press new step just click there so we can see the contents of the table. We're going to say table transform columns and we give it the table as an input. And for this, we need to get a transform operation as a list. And we first going to refer to the first thing I want to remove there is I want to get rid. I want to first identify where my data set start. It needs to start at stock. OK, cool. So we're going to refer to expand it. I'm going to say I want to look at the data column. Yes. And for, let's just press shift and enter. 
And for each element in the data table, now we're in this child nested table, I'm going to say start square brackets. Yes. And in there, I'm going to declare a variable. Let's call this find stock uh, to basically find where my table starts. And I'm going to say table skip. And we're going to give it our underscore, which refers to the table. And I'm going to say each for each row within this nested table, I want to look at column one. Yes, where column one is not equal to stock because that's the pattern we have here. So basically, I know my table starts at stock. So anything that's not stock, that's not really anything that we're interested in. And all we need to do is after this curly bracket, after the block bracket, I just need to put the find stock name in there. And I need to close this off like that. So now what you'll see is we basically got rid. We use the table skip to basically skip all the top rows to get to a nice clean table. Pretty cool. Next thing we need to do is I want to promote the headers of the table. Okay. So let's add a step. So go there, put a comma in there, say promote. And for this, I'll say table promote headers. And I'm just going to give it the find stock on my previous step. And you just need to remember to replace that find stock over there with promote. And then like magic, you have promoted your headers. Next thing that I don't like over here, as you can see, I got a null row in there for the totals. So let's quickly exclude that. So go back comma and we're going to do another nested thing here. Let's say exclude totals. And we're going to say table select rows. Yes. I'm going to give it the promote as the input. That's the previous table. I'm going to say each stock column inside the nested table. No. All right. And I'm just going to say exclude totals. I'm going to slap that in there. And let's see if there's any nulls in there. No nulls. We've removed it. I want to unpivot this data set. So let's say comma over there. Go back to the previous function. Let's say unpivot. And in here, I'm just going to say table unpivot other columns. And I'm going to take the exclude totals as the table that we're referring to. And I'm going to say, I want to keep the rows, the stock code as the rows, as you can see, there's the stock code. But what I want to do is I want to have a column for period, which is that quarter period. And I want to, that's not in curly brackets, just remove the curly brackets. And I want one for the holdings, the actual values. Yeah. And that's as simple as that. All I do is I need to return the unpivot in there. And like magic, there we go. We've unpivoted the data set. So now we're going to do something really cool. So what you could do right now is you can just click on there and say expand. This is the conventional way. And then you go like, oh, rename this to portfolio, rename it to source and you got what you wanted. But I don't want to do that. I want to explain to you how you can use inner and outer context for tables to take the, the data of the outside table and insert it into the inside table. So I want to take this name and this name and insert it over there. So how will I do that? Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit harder. I'm not going to take the easy way out. Just going to say add a new step. And before we do that, let's click here so we can have a little preview of what's going on there. So we say table add column. Yes, into the custom. Yeah, that's the previous one. We're going to add a whole new column at the I'm going to add a whole new column over there called final table. Yes. And in there, I'm going to say each and now I'm going to use a nested let statement. All right. So I'm going to say let let's call this um, add inner add to inner. Okay. Now this is a variable name. That could be anything that you want to give it. If you want to call this X, Y, Z, you could, I'm just going to call the X, Y, Z then. Okay. So in context of that, we're going to add a new column there. But what I want to do is I want to say table, add a column to the inner table. Okay, I want to add a column to the inner table, the nested table as well. 
I want to add that to the data data column. Yes, you can see this inner table. And I want to call this new column the portfolio and source. Oh, well, yeah. But you see, the problem now is I can't use each statement if I want to go from the outer table, to put something from an outer table to an inner table. I need to use a function. So this is what I need to do. I need to say, I'm just going to say X. You can give it any old name. I'm now going to do an inner and outer table. So because we're, this is the outer table and this is the inner table. So I'm going to take a variable from the outer table and put it into the inner table. I'm going to say take name one from the outer table. Yes. And let's just put a pipe delimiter in there and say and and we're going to join it to name. OK, and I'm going to say this is in and let's just give it X, Y, Z need to close it off. So, OK, so you can see now it added that new thing called new table, final table. And you can see what we did is we added in the inner table. We took two elements from the outer table and added it to the inner table. That's pretty cool. So all I want to do now is this X, Y, Z variable that I created. You can literally call it anything. I now want to do a little split and just split it by that pipe delimiter. So all I'm going to say there at the end and say table split column. Yes, I'm going to give it that X, Y, Z as an input. And we're going to split portfolio and source that portfolio and source column. Yes. And we're going to split it by splitter, split text by delimiter. And I'm going to say we're going to use the pipe delimiter. And I want to return, I want to call these two new columns, portfolio and source file. Let's see what happened. There we go. Pretty cool. Once again, it's a long way of doing it, but now you can kind of like see how to join an outer table to an inner table. Let's add a step because this final table now contains everything that we want and not what, what we need. So we can just say table combine, give it that. And we're just going to say we only need the final like that. And there you go. There you go. Now I can return it to Excel and there you have it. So now that you've seen that, there's a lot of easy ways to just do the exact same thing by just expanding the tables and all of that. But I hope this gave you some idea of how you can transform nested tables using table transform columns and then also referring an outer to an inner table. It's pretty powerful stuff. Anyway, BA Sensei signing out.